You boys know what's about to happen to you. You leave now. Some consider these traits to be toxic, such as undesirable in the men of today. We consider these traits such as these not only to be desirable, but to be appreciated and celebrated. Welcome to the Toxic Male Appreciation Show, hosted by Armm and Lorena Creole. Welcome to the safe space for the toxic male. Well, hello, 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 everyone, and welcome to my channel. I'm Lorena, Lorena Creel, and with me, of course, is her, mm, and welcome to the Toxic Masculinity Appreciation Show. Of course, you know the show where we celebrate all of those traditionally toxic male qualities. So we enjoy talking about you guys over here. And of course, we always have our celebrity to talk about of the week. So how are you doing, my dear? I'm doing great. It's it's finally warm here. It is summer. It feels ah, nice. Uh, I know. You look weather. so summery. I love it. You and how about you, Lorraine? How are you doing today? I, I'm doing. I'm doing good. It's uh 103 with the <laughs> with the uh, heat index, but cool inside with the AC, and it's uh and it's all good. So well, you're looking lovely today as well, Lorraine. Oh well, thank you, thank you so <laughs> very much, so very much. Uh, well, I am glad that it is almost uh it's almost Friday. And of course, a long Independence Day weekend. So I am looking forward to that, definitely for sure. And I believe uh, America is going to be 246 wow. on a Monday, that's 4th of July. Kind of kind of crazy, huh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're a very, uh, very young country, but a very, very interesting and a very innovative, uh, innovative country. And I always notice that more and more, especially when you have some of these actors who are somewhat known in their country, or maybe not really that well known in their country, and they'll come over here and they're basically superstars, you know, over overnight. And it's just like nowhere else. Could that uh, could that happen? Uh, could that happen for them? And speaking, first of all, thanks to all of you watching us over there on Twitch. We sure do appreciate it. We love coming over here on Twitch. As you know, we do the Toxic Masculinity Appreciation Show live here on Twitch first, and then the replay is over on YouTube on Sundays at 1 p.m. Eastern. And let's see, we have got Arthur Potato Hammer hanging out with us. It says, hello, ladies. Hello. Well, hello, hello to you. And thank you so much for coming in here and joining us. We appreciate that. So, 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 so do so do appreciate that. Let's see. Okay, so here he is. So again, prime example of one of these, you know, stars that are somewhat known very well in their home country, not really well known here. And then they just come over here and blow up. And of course, one of those happens to be Chris Hemsworth, yet another Australian. I swear there's like a like a actor pipeline from like Australia to the, to the U to the U S <laughs> uh, having Chris Wimsworth one here. Another guy who I really didn't know he was Australian until I heard him in an interview. So his American, uh, his American accent is, is on point. And usually what I do, you, you know, we usually do when we come on here, where was the first time that you were aware of who Chris Hemsworth was? Mm -hmm. It was Thor. It was a Thor film. Um, I had never heard of him prior to that. And um, when I saw who they picked for Thor, you know, my jaw just dropped to the ground because, you know, the first time that you see Chris Hemsworth, uh, your jaw just drops to the ground. You know, he's so incredibly striking and handsome and fit. 
Um, he's mm -hmm. only, he almost is like the perfect person to cast for Thor. Um, so that's the first time I saw him. What about you, Lorraine? Um, same, Thor. That was the first place that I saw him. And granted, I did not, um, I didn't read a lot of the uh, a lot of the comics. When I saw who they cast and what he looked like in the posters, I'm just like, dang, that's yeah, okay, without a doubt, that's uh, that's Thor. So when the movie um, first came out, um, I didn't. I don't think I checked it out when it came out in theaters. I checked it out, I believe, when it came out like on streaming, right? And was like, wow, this this guy is something else. And then I think after I saw Thor, that's when I went to see the first Avengers movie. No, actually, no, not the first Avengers movie. When I went to see um, Avengers uh, Infinity War. Yes. So that's when I saw him in uh, in Infinity War. So that's when he popped up um, onto my radar. Like we were saying, extremely handsome, extremely, um, extremely fit. His take on, on Thor, um, the original one, uh, Ragnarok, a little, 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 little bit, little bit, uh, Thor Dark World. I don't like to talk about that one because <laughs> I know, I mean, Ragnarok, uh, I had some issues with it, but overall, I overall I, I enjoyed it because it was just interesting. His take of he's basically this god that has to live among mortal people, you know. So he has kind of like that haughtiness to start out with, but eventually he kind of starts to balance, you know, the two. Like in um, I believe was I think it was Ragnarok where he showed up and he's just like talking to people. Oh, can we take a selfie with you? He's like, sure. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, like that, but I, you know, I was impressed um, with, with his, with his acting to me, he is Thor. Yeah. And I'm not being facetious about it. Just with the way that he is with, uh, with the character. Yes, absolutely. He completely, uh, you know, if I, I look up Thor in the dictionary, I think, there's going to be a picture of Chris Hemsworth as an example of that. Um, he's added so much charisma and charm and personality to the character, too, which I was not expecting. You know, we've seen gods represented in comics and in mm -hmm. movies all the time, but this absolutely beyond the shadow of, of the doubt was the most charismatic god I've ever seen. I, I don't. I think Eros is probably the only other God that has that level of, of charisma and, and charm that he has added to Thor. Cause you know, I always imagined Thor as being powerful and strong and somewhat um, firm and, and, and tough mm -hmm. and not charismatic, maybe not as warm as he comes across, you know, not as uh, you know, you just kind of fall in love with this Thor character right away. Uh, and you know, his personality in real life is, uh, he's he's a ham he's like you know absolutely humble and uh you know uh just an incredible uh person um yeah he's he's the total package and then some i think that they got lucky when they cast him uh in that role and um you know thank goodness he got it because i i can't imagine anyone else playing it now i think it would be hard to find someone who could Mm -hmm. um, build up Thor. Um, and Thor has had, you know, a bit of a bumpy road recently, which I'm sure we're going to address. Um, and we have mm -hmm. spoken about before, but, um, certainly, uh, Chris Hemsworth can, I think, keep that role, uh, as his own. And, you know, no matter what they throw at him, I think he can handle it. I agree with you. Totally, totally agree with you. But let's find a little bit more like about him. Of course, Obviously, he is Australian. Um, <laughs> from <laughs> he's from Victoria. <laughs> I know some Aussies are like, uh, screw Victoria. <laughs> <laughs> I almost kind of wish that he was from. Uh, oh my gosh, I'm blanket Queensland. Is the reason why right. is like because Queensland. Um, apparently, Queensland is the Florida of Australia. 
Oh, I didn't know that. <laughs> they even have this, they even have the same, um, I guess there's this provincial, but here, here it's a state, same motto, Sunshine State. <laughs> So I'm a little, I'm a little disappointed. He's not from, uh, he's not from Queensland, <laughs> but you know, that's, that's all, that's all right. That's all right. So eventually let's see. So let's see, born August 11th in Melbourne, Victoria, his brothers are actors. Now that I did not know. Yeah. I didn't know that either. Um, we're going to, we're definitely going to have to look them up too. <laughs> yeah. As a matter of fact, we, we, we going to look this up right now. <laughs> Because you know how sometimes I'll have one uh, one sibling who's really, really hot. The other siblings are busted looking. So I'm going <laughs> to figure out what it is here. Okay. Oh, oh we know okay. him. We know him, don't we? What was he in? He, he knows, knows this actor. Do we? Let's don't see. Don't we? I don't know. I thought we He was him. in the Hunger Games? Yeah. Yeah, he was. Wait, 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 yes. wait, 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 Wasn't he the, Let me go down was he here. the love interest that, I don't remember. Oh, he was in the Hunger Games and Mocking J part two, the part of Gail and part, Hawthorne. And part one as well, yeah, he's, um. And think, in one, and in Catching Fire. Yes. Yeah, he's an wow. important character, I think. Um, I can't remember which character he is, but um yeah he, he i recognized his face um wow. you're better yeah. than me i was just like i have been, i'm like he looks cute but i have never I've ne <laughs> he was in the expendables too real i don't remember him from that and i and i saw the uh mm -hmm. i saw the expendables so that's that's interesting so he is let's see six years younger oh wow that's quite a bit yeah yeah, because Ian, because uh, Chris Hemsworth was born in um, 1983. Mm -hmm. Liam was born in 1990. And his brother, Luke Hemsworth, was born in 1980. So he's the oldest one. And who was he? All right, let's see. That's what happens with these darn related actor families. We got to figure out who's in a... <laughs> He was in what? So he was in Ragnarok. He was in Westworld. Yeah, he's in Thor, uh, Love and Thunder again. Maybe he's this double for him. He says, it says actor Thor. So I'm guessing there's like a like a movie within a movie. Probably yeah, to pick this guy. Oh, you're, you're playing me? Really? <laughs> That's probably what it is. And even funnier the fact that they cast you know they cast his brother oh yeah for it let's see he was in westworld which i have not seen i heard it was good but i hadn't, hadn't seen that he was in ragnarok as actor thor too am i did i miss that part in ragnarok i think that he's he probably i'm i don't know for sure but i'm thinking he might be his double mm. actor thor okay i, I could may, be wrong but mm -hmm. um I don't know. I may have to go back and actually watch uh watch Ragnarok. <laughs> I will not rewatch the Dark World, but I will go back and I will watch <laughs> Ragnarok. I can I can deal with that. <laughs> He's on Saturday Night Live, Winners and Losers. So a lot of this stuff I don't really know him from, or I probably like blinked and blinked and missed it. I think some of what we are looking at is stuff from overseas. I think so. I think the so. Rise of Luke Hemsworth. He's good looking too, Lorena. Yeah, he's good yeah, looking. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I know. They're all good looking. Like I said, that's just like, hmm. Well, check and see if it runs in the family, you know. <laughs> Hello. It, oh, go ahead. It does run in the family. <laughs> that's good hey happy dinosaur 8000 who says happy day to you Lorena Creole and the other girl whose name is too small to read oh you might be looking on at your phone but it's this our, is mm. yes a positive fandom she can say her name way better than I can <laughs> although the dark council loves it when I say your name <laughs> good seeing you happy dinosaur nice to have you here with us 
Uh, yeah, that's Luke Hemsworth. Yeah, they they all shoot. They all look good. Yeah, he's they he's really good. attractive. Um. <laughs> Let's see his his uncle by marriage was Rod Ansell, the Bushman who inspired the comedy film what? Crocodile Dundee. No way! What? That no is crazy. Way. Then it is like Florida Man because I feel like Crocodile Dundee is Florida Man. Just he like is. That. Okay. He is. <laughs> Meridians watch Crocodile Dundee like, yeah, I know somebody exactly, exactly like that. It's like, that's not a knife. That's a knife. Like, that's a knife. Like a yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh. That is, that's funny. That's funny. Well, but, you, you hit that nail on the head, Lorena. You were right. It is. There's definitely a Florida man version uh maybe they're not so far from it after all no from what i've heard and it's funny i'll have like australians that will be in my welcome to florida show and they're like yeah that sounds like queensland <laughs> <laughs> and from what i heard that you know they actually they know about you know they know about florida man and supposedly oh, really? yeah supposedly new zealanders talk about Australians like they're like we talk about Florida man <laughs> you know <laughs> <laughs> it's like you swap stories about which state is trying to kill you the fastest you know <laughs> one, of, one of those one of those things mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. apparently he was on the Australian version of Dancing with the Stars oh wow yeah and here's something that I didn't know. He was actually in Star Trek 2009. Yeah, I didn't know that. As now who the heck was he? I gotta find this he out. He plays us like a a George Kirk. Kirk? Yeah, he plays a Kirk character. I don't. I don't. Maybe it's a brother or something. Or yeah. it might be because I do not. I do not remember him. I don't either. I mean, I know that Kirk um, is played by Chris Pine, who we love. Exactly. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, I guess he's playing his brother, maybe his older brother or something, um, and their tradition, their family there. But I, I had never, I, I wouldn't have remembered that character. But there he is. <laughs> no, it's like I remember everyone. I remember all of. I remember. I know all these guys: Zachary Quinto, Quinto. I know Carl Urban, John Cho. Hey, we all knew who that is, right? That's right. <laughs> yep. Yep. Little, little too old to be cast as Spike Spiegel, but you know, he did all right. <laughs> he did okay. And I remember uh, Winona Ryder. And of course, where did he go? Yeah, Carl Urban is bones. Goodness gracious. That's He's so good in that. He was dead on. God, he was dead, good. dead on, dead on Sue. I loved him in that. And of course, all of the Avengers movies that uh, yes. that that he you know that he was in, and my one of my favorite things about seeing him in the Avengers movies actually was uh, his interaction, like with um, oh my gosh, with Peter Quill, Guardians of the Galaxy. <laughs> yes, yes, <laughs> that was funny. That was funny. I absolutely like that. But it's so cool how much um, he's been in. It's like no one knew about him. And then boom, all of a sudden he's there. Chris Hemsworth as Captain Kirk's dad. Um, oh, so he was the one on, uh, oh my gosh. Was he in the beginning where they, they evacuated his wife off the ship and they were talking about what to call baby? I don't remember. I and I think she had said, "Type." I think they said like Tiberius or like what after your dad <laughs> or something like that. Like they were talking about that. And he went down with the ship. Okay. Okay. Oh, so that no, was him. Terrible. Yeah. It was, um, I will, as much as I cannot freaking stand JJ Abrams, I did like the 2009 reboot of, of a uh, Star Trek. I actually liked that movie. So the opening to that, yeah, the opening to that was something else. Wow. 
I was, sta- I was staring straight at Chris Hathworth and didn't even know who the heck he was. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is, uh, I think I have a picture. He kind of looks like, um, he kind of reminds me of Chris Pine in the picture. This is, this is him. Oh, shoot. No wonder I didn't recognize who he, I would not have known that. Yeah, that's him. And he's, I guess he's playing, uh, spa, um, Good Lord. Uh, Kirk's dad, as Mm -hmm. as he said. It's kind of odd. He was at the beginning smashing spaceships into other spaceships. Yeah, I, I that but that was cool. That that opening battle scene was it was fire. It was absolutely pure, pure fire. Yeah, he do. I just knew he was cute. I just didn't know who he was. Really, really cute. Let's see. So it looks like a lot of these are like kind of like Australian shows. And then of course he does Star Trek. Then of course Thor. Mm-hmm. Of course. So let me open. Let me open up Thor because we got to We got to open up Thor. Of course. Wow, 2011. This is what I remember seeing the uh, seeing the poster, and I'm just like, wow. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Kenneth Branagh yeah. directed it. That's another thing that cracks me up. Well, he Kenneth- just won uh, best screenplay for his Belfast movie. Uh, really? I think, yeah, I think it was best uh, best original screenplay. I think. Mm-hmm. Let's check it. Let's check. Mm-hmm. Let's check it because I don't want to say the wrong thing. Well, also for people who don't know, Kenneth Branagh, aka Gilderoy Lockhart. Yes. <laughs> and he, he played good. the heck out of that role. <laughs> he looks good. Damn, he looks good. <laughs> He he looked so so good, and he was so obviously like flamboyant with that. Mm-hmm. Happy crack it up, happy dinosaur eight thousand says. At the risk of sounding homosexual, I say Chris Hemsworth is a very handsome man. That's what I've heard a lot of guys say. They're like, I'm not gay, but he's good looking. Man. Oh my gosh, <laughs> he's so good looking. He is so good looking. It's uh, you, and that's okay. Yeah, that's perfectly. That's perfectly. Yeah. That's perfectly okay. Yeah, he did. He won an Academy Award for Belfast. I think it was Best Original Screenplay. Oh, okay. Which, yeah, which he just won this year. So Branna, mm-hmm. Kenneth Branna. Right. Um, and I agree. Chris Chris Hemsworth is also a very attractive man. Um, his brothers are very attractive men. Um. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. and Mrs. Hemsworth. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you did good. You gave us a good looking uh, trifecta. Absolutely. Absolutely. What's going on? <laughs> um, I'm not sure exactly what, because uh, I'm not a Kenneth Branagh like, um, aficionado. I know of him. Mm-hmm. I know of stuff he's been in pretty much if I come, if like if I come across it. Like I know him from other things where I've seen him. But it's like kind of like unless he somehow is into the pop culture that I'm interested in, like Harry Potter, him cast as Gilderoy Lockhart was abs. That was perfect, freaking perfect casting. Absolutely and he looked casting. so damn good in the film, Lorena. He was hot. He was did. Like, That's why everybody was fawning over. God, <laughs> damn. I was like, he was. Kenneth Branagh is looking kind of good there, you know? Yeah. Um, <laughs> Kenneth Branagh, the best looking Hufflepuff you ever going to see on the series. Curly hair, smiling, and he's like, I'm Gilderoy Lockhart. And you're just like, <laughs> hello, <laughs> Mr. Lockhart. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. But one of the cool things is uh, some actors make some of the best directors. And yes. Thor... The original Thor was actually directed um, very, very well. I was thoroughly impressed by it. Of course, Sir Sir Anthony Hopkins was in it too, which I yeah, do I love. Yeah, I didn't uh, know Kenneth Branagh had directed it. Did you know? Like before, I did. <laughs> I did not. I had <laughs> I had zero idea. The only thing that I knew is just that the way that the movie was put together and kind of the way that it was shot actually like that. I thought it was pretty. Uh, I thought it was a very, very good, very good, uh, very good job. Let's see. And the next, oh, okay, this was such a guilty pleasure of mine. 
somebody told me to watch this movie but didn't tell me that Chris Hemsworth was in it. Okay, every stereotype of a horror movie that you have ever seen is in this movie. Yes, and I do like, I'm not going to say what the secret is for people who haven't seen it, but I like the secret in it. I really like that sealed it for me. That sealed the deal for me. I said, this is cool. You know, like they decided to put that in. They didn't have to because it looks very different from what it reveals itself to be. Mm -hmm. um, and so I loved it. I, I thought it was great. And you're right. I didn't know Hemsworth was in this until you start watching it. Um, <laughs> and you're like, oh, hello. I wouldn't mind going in a cabin in the woods. Like, I know. I'm cool with it. I'll go. Yeah, I'll go on the trip. All I got to <laughs> say is that motorcycle scene. Yeah. <laughs> Dang it. <laughs> yeah. Happy Dinosaur 8000 said, I love Cabin in the Woods. Good Drew Goddard film. Yeah, yeah. I, I like this a yeah. lot more than, uh, than I thought that I thought it was going to. I mean, as soon as you um, drop a little bit of the evil dead in it, everybody knows if you see an old book, and some Latin writing. You do not say that out loud. You do not recite it. You put that book out there and you burn it. That's what yes. you do. With it. And don't look at it. Don't like be mesmerized by the cover or the binder. Don't listen or... to it. That's right. Just don't just... let it bargain with you. Just burn it. That's right. <laughs> just burn it. <laughs> it's very yes. mesmer comedy. Is the yes, yes it is. Yes it is. That twist. I'm like. Yeah, I know, right? It's Get so out good. of here. <laughs> <laughs> it's so good. Oh my it, gosh. Anybody who hasn't seen it, go see Cabin in the Woods. Yes, yes. This is, if somebody asks me, you know, what what Chris Hemsworth movie should I start off with? This is this is really going to be one of them. Mm -hmm. And I, uh, I like it too in that sense, so let's say for the horror genre of A Cabin in the Woods, you know, it's like there's going to be, you know, hot chicks but you also get a hot guy in it, which I like that they gave us that. You know, we I like being able to look at, I mean, he looks so hot in it. It's just like, yeah, hi, you know. How you doing? <laughs> How you doing? Save me. Yep. No. <laughs> Don't leave me alone. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> oh, no. I know this is, I told somebody, I said purely Chris Hemsworth is the only, okay, well, Chris Hemsworth was the only reason I kind of like, kept watching because i was like i don't know if i liked it oh chris hemsworth okay okay i'll hang in here a uh a bit longer and i'm glad i did because i like i said i i thoroughly enjoyed this i thought it was freaking uh hysterical now and Jesse is also in it lorraine yeah? yes and he's kind of hot too <laughs> yes he most definitely is so uh, there was plenty of eye candy to go around on this one. Yes. Um, yeah. Thank you. Thank you, whoever you are. Mm -hmm. Whatever casting agent did this. Thank you so much. Plenty of uh, plenty of male and female eye candy. Definitely a lot of that toxic male protective thing, you know, going on. You like yeah. that. Yeah. You like that. <laughs> Lude both the women and the men. JoJo's bizarre adventure. Oh, you know, I, you know what? <laughs> Happy dinosaur. <laughs> that is, oh, that's probably in one of my top three favorite mangas. That's like, or actually anime. So that's kind of like on my, uh, that's really on my radar. And I can't wait for part two of uh, of Stone Ocean to show up on Netflix just because I want to see what happens to Joe Turo? Please don't, please, please don't tell me. Please don't tell me. Um, yeah, but Stardust Crusaders is uh, is my favorite. Stardust Crusaders is the most. Uh, I don't want to call it bromantic, but it's uh it's it's full of bro humor. That's in it. It really is. It's 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 the most masculine, yet the gayest part of Jojo's Bizarre Adventure ever. That's all I'm going to say. It just happens to do freaking both. It, it, re it really it really does. Beautifully beautifully drawn men. Let's put it that way. In there. Yeah. 
that's the moto to fan service I like. Meta fan service, yeah. Yeah. Golden win. Oh, it wasn't my favorite. I just didn't. I didn't like. I didn't like the animation style. The story didn't really grab me. I, I think I kind of tapped out for a while when I saw the gangster dance on the yacht, and I kind of said, "No, this is it for me." <laughs> but I did come back later on and finish it. Mista and Six Bullets is actually my favorite. Uh, my favorite character. Other than that, you know, it was all right. <laughs> it's all right. It's all right. It's all right. But I get you. I get you. I get you. I freaking love Mista. Oh my gosh. <laughs> He's got. Well, this, oh, go ahead. This film is a classic. And I don't think there are a lot of films that can hold a candle to it because of the no. twist of the film. And, you know, this is, I think that this time period, let's say the 2000s, early, you know, let's say, uh, I guess it's the 2010s, but let's just say the 2000s. And mm -hmm. past that point, we're expecting more intelligent horror, you know, and, and that's why I think sometimes when we get horror films down, they don't go there or do something different. We're kind of like, well, it was okay. This film, it was really, really good. And I think that they had to add something to it to give it that little bit of oomph. Um, mm -hmm. And that's why we loved it so much. Absolutely. Yeah. This is definitely one of my, one of my, one of my favorite favorite horror movies to watch it's like you're scared to death and laughing and it's kind of <laughs> laughing and like don't go in of course they're gonna go in there you know ah yep. great but yeah and of course chris hemsworth was of course wonderful in it too of course let's see what else we got here oh of course you know of course the avengers right oh hold on one second i'm right. gonna like pop that open Hate it when I lose my place. Let's see here. Da, 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 da. Here we go. Okay. Okay. So the Avengers. Now, I actually skipped this first one. Cannot explain why. Just for some reason, I just wasn't really too uh too interested in it. And then went back and uh then went back and watched it. He's smoking hot in this. Um, and I know there's been many iterations of his outfit, but he just looks so diesel in this, especially in the poster uh, that we can see. Oh, right God, here. yeah. He looks incredible. He's almost glowing. I know. It's like he looks good. I think for I think for me, because the Avengers was like a like I had zero interest in the Avengers storyline in the comics. So I'm kind of like, eh, okay, wake me up when uh Tony Stark <laughs> has his own movie again. Then I'll come yeah. back and you know, like pay and like pay attention to it. But yeah, I loved him in, in uh loved him in this. And uh that was great. Happy Dinosaur says the Avengers was a comic book movie victory. But the law of diminishing quality slowly kicked into the MCU. Yeah, I believe that happened. I kind of feel like uh, Endgame, they pretty much, they, they, let's put this way, they blew up all the fireworks in Endgame. Yeah. And it's kind of <laughs> like, now what? I mean, I, I could almost go so far as to say they did it in Infinity War because we knew what was going to happen in Endgame after that. You know, I think, yeah, I think so. I think so. I think I'd have to, I think I would have to, I would have to agree <laughs> with you on that. And I think, I think the reason why I, for me, that I thought that it was with Endgame was because several of those movies I did not watch. Oh, like, yeah, yeah. In succession up until um infinity war so it's like when like when i was watching infinity war um i couldn't figure out why everybody was cheering because captain america picked up thor's hammer i'm like yeah 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 i'm like yeah. i'm missing i'm missing it and i and i don't like missing stuff so i had to go back <laughs> I like i had to go back and watch age ultron which i didn't want to go see the avengers yeah. which i wasn't interested in seeing so i had to go yeah. back go back watch the winter soldier 
I'd seen Captain America, so I had to go back, watch all of those movies, including Ant-Man and the freaking Wasp, which I wound up liking a lot more than, than I thought I did. So by that time, then Endgame showed up. So I'm kind of like, okay, they kind of like, all right, this is it. And it's, you know, this is it and it's done. But if I would have seen everything up until, um, up until Infinity War, I would have felt exactly the same as you, that they basically, they, there's no freaking coming back from this. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it, things were forever changed and, and it was incredibly drastic. Um, oh. They stopped trying after Angie. I, I thought, I thought, um, I thought Infinity War was infinitely better than, um, mm-hmm. than Endgame, for real. That's what I thought, but yeah. They just didn't have a plan, um, after that and actually we'll talk about how that relates to Thor in a little bit uh in a little bit so yeah that's the Avengers and let's see now this was one that I did not see which was Snow White and the Huntsman mm-hmm. I don't know if you happen to um happen to see that isn't that um Charlize okay yes as a as the evil as the evil queen, now, I did like that because she yeah. looked freaking. She looked hot. She's so good. I she also, looked hot. I also love her commercials, the Jador commercials, mm-hmm. where she's like strutting around in these like gold dresses and shit, and she's like, I know, know wouldn't that be the freaking coolest? And I'm like, yeah, let's let's just do it. We need to do a commercial like that. Like, I know, just with the gold <laughs> on. What, what, what? I'm going to have to say it is. What is it about couture perfume commercials that looks so freaking amazing? Yeah, and I still like the 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 Johnny Depp one, the uh, Sauvage. Oh, Sauvage. He's, he's just standing there. Mm-hmm. You know, he's not even doing anything. He's so not doing good. nothing. Like, oh, <laughs> Sauvage. There's also um. The YSL Eve Saint Laurent men's commercial with Je- Lenny Kravitz yes. does that one. Um, <laughs> there's like the Chanel Chance commercial, which I absolutely love every time they come out with the uh, with the uh, with those. And I'm blank, and there's another one that um oh, crap, it'll probably hit me later. Oh oh oh, Aqu- Aqua de Geo commercials. It's always hot, half naked Italian guys. You know? <laughs> I remember that one very well. Yeah, I do not object. <laughs> mm-hmm. No, no, they're freaking hot. They're freaking hot. Let's see. Snow White and the Huntsman was awful. Now, I did not see this um, this movie. I saw the poster. Mm-hmm. I didn't. Um, I didn't see it. Mostly because when I heard about the twist that the Huntsman is her protector, and I'm just like, that's not how I remember reading about it in Grimm's fairy tales. Uh, <laughs> he was tasked with going to find her, cut her heart out, and bring it back to the evil queen as proof that girlfriend was dead. <laughs> I mean, he was supposed to do that. He did let her go because he couldn't. He could, you know, he couldn't do it. But I'm like protector and mentor. I was like, mm, I don't know, I don't know. So you said you didn't see this one? Uh-huh. No, I didn't. Yeah, I. I wonder if I'd watch it just to, just to see Charlize Theron as the evil as the evil yeah. queen, because that's one of those roles where you just have to be just ooze evil, because she was just <laughs> hidden. Evil. She, evil. she was. She was. She absolutely. She absolutely was. And that's what I remember from the Grimm's fairy tales. There was no redeeming this chick. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I love it. I love it. She's perfect for it. I know. Oh my God. I love that. Just like she's coming out of a dark milk bath. Yeah, I'm stealing people's <laughs> souls. God, I freaking love it. Uh. <laughs> Let's see. And it's on stars. Yeah, I might check it out on stars. You know, I won't lose anything out for, uh, out for <laughs> that one. Let's see. Red Dawn. I didn't know he was. Uh, this must be the remake to Red Dawn, which I yeah. haven't seen yet. Yeah, this is and, the And I, here's my thing. I, did, I remember the original 80s movie. Oh, yeah. So did you see this one? 
the remake I haven't, at all? No. Uh, well, I, I, the names, I, I don't know. Like, I don't know any of these people. I don't think I know all of them. Um, Jeffrey Dean Morgan, maybe he, I, I don't know. I don't know these guys. A group of, and it's the same story, except it's North Korea rather than Russia. Oh, in Russia. Oh, okay. Yep. I'm already tapped out. <laughs> I like Chris Hemsworth, but mm, yeah. I don't even know whether this idea is believable anymore. You know, like in the 80s, it seemed very, you know, probable, likely, mm -hmm. you know, that that could happen and they could fight back. But now I'm like, you know what? No one would care. They would just be like, yeah, go ahead. Just don't ruin our internet and our electric and phone and, sh and stuff so we can do whatever we want to do. We don't care who's, <laughs> who's coming in. <laughs> who's going to fight now? Come on. Oh, I know. It's just like, do you really think, you know, high schoolers are going to, no. you know, go and take go and take them out nah it's not gonna happen not Maybe gonna in happen the 80s yeah some of those guys would be like we're gonna yeah fuck we're just like we're gonna go in we're gonna do, you know we're gonna <laughs> go and look. do this america because that's what they do like on the weekends they're shooting cans off the sides of a log and such and so this they were ready they, the ones in the 80s were ready even though there were some mm -hmm. some of them were a little scared but you mm -hmm. know and they were really they were willing to fight for it now i'm like i don't know it's sad that i have to say that no, but it's true. It's just when it, and again, I'm going to tell people, go back and watch the original 80s movie, Red Dawn. Okay. It's like you see freaking Russian paratroopers dropping outside, you know, your school. What you going to do? Yeah, yeah. They're basically like, okay, we're just going to go take them out you know, defend the school. These, these were people, these were people who they knew what firearms fricking were. Mm -hmm. Okay. They knew what they were and they knew what to do, you know, and they, they were already prepping. Like they had shit, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like they had, they had food, they knew how to survive in the wild. You know, these, these boys knew stuff and it they, was like, they could fix a car. They could do all sorts of, you remember the boys fix a car, up? a hot car, a car, yeah, you yes. know, change the yeah. oil That's while right. cleaning their gun out at the same time and or how to raise your own food. Half of them had already been going into places they weren't supposed to be going to anyway. And you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like they were climbing on tops of buildings and doing all sorts of shit. And it's like, where's so-and-so? It's like, oh, he's on the other side of the building, like on mm -hmm. the roof or some shit like that. And you'd be like, what? In the what roof? Yeah. Like you know, the safe house over there, what you know, because because at this point in time in, in history, when this was going on, there was a threat of like the Soviets, you know, coming over mom and us. So people were just like, ready they just you know yeah. they were just they, they were just ready you know <laughs> not now where it's just like just don't you know get rid of our internet and do an emp pulse that's and right shoot that's everything what scared of, is the out e and i can't do anything so i'm just gonna <laughs> roll over in a ball and and roll over no because there's just <laughs> two things with one thing with this movie north korea couldn't even get a rocket off the that freaking blew Spoils up on impact on yeah <laughs> not 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 freaking not freaking believable not no you want to see the original full of toxic masculinity version you want to see the original red dawn which also mm -hmm. includes what happens to traitors too at the same time so mm -hmm. we just gonna leave it at that <laughs> well the other thing too is that um you know if, if i remember correctly uh at least for uh yeah there there he goes he says i think most oh okay i think that's fair assumption to uh happy dinosaur mm -hmm. saying most guys would fight if they had something to fight for you know nowadays you know adding to what you were saying lorena in regards to like their wi-fi and everything you know back in the day there'd be some guy who's like yeah i built a faraday cage or some shit like that or underground bunker but today they just buy it mm -hmm. and they wouldn't know how it worked you know like the there are some preppers out there who are watching. There are, you know, God bless you for whatever mm -hmm. it is you're doing, but you can buy it on the internet. They probably just figure, yeah, I'll buy it in case. I got, I, I picked up a Faraday cage today for my, for my playing console. <laughs> I mean, these are people who know how to go to Radio Shack with a laundry list or, or, or fries. Cause I think Radio Shack's out of business. I don't know if mm -hmm. fries are still around, but mm -hmm. that's usually where guys would go to get stuff to set up like their ham radio and, mm -hmm. you know, and all of, 
all of uh all of that equipment and stuff. The that survival done. gear. They they go to the Army Navy. They, they bug out bags. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're ready. They stuff. were ready. <laughs> mm -hmm. This one not so. Uh, this one not yeah. so. Not. But so you know much. where I think it might have worked or it could have worked, and I, this may not be true, but it'd have to be in a super rural area. Like, what if it was done in the Australian outback where it's there's no one there. That's true. Either the yeah, either the Australian outback or someplace in like rural America. Like for like, example, they would not be dropping anywhere in Florida because everybody's got guns. <laughs> <laughs> well, what about like Monument Valley where it's just, there's nothing out there? You know, it's just absolutely there's nothing there except for like the reservations and everything. And mm -hmm. There's no reason to go and invade that area, but <laughs> no, it's just like, why are you here? Just stuff yeah. for no reason. Oh my god, that was fun to talk about. <laughs> uh, I know that brought back some memories. I tell yeah. you, here's the other yet. A, oh god, I love this yeah. freaking movie, but we 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 gonna bring it up because uh, it's it's Lord, it's gonna address another. Another title, uh, yeah. Most guys my age know of military surplus right. stores. Oh yeah, yeah. Those, uh What's some other ones? Uh, Sometimes, um, the ones that I knew around where I lived, um, I cannot remember the name, but I know exactly where they all were. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Well, Models so, is gone. Sometimes they didn't have military surplus, but at least they had kind of like sports equipment and yeah. Um, stuff that you could use if you couldn't get military surplus stuff but mm -hmm. um nemo's was one that i knew of and mm -hmm. it was popular these guys they would be in there you know getting stuff you know stuff mm -hmm. you need meals ready to eat last yeah. for 20 years <laughs> and they would eat them now like they'd be like yeah so <laughs> like oh this is my favorite because it's got mac and cheese in it <laughs> i'm like ew are you for yeah okay well you know you still eat it but uh yeah he was in this um, I don't even like to freaking acknowledge it. Well, it's it's no longer canon, you know, because uh, Ghostbusters Afterlife fixed that problem. The most the most disappointing thing is how horrible those jumpsuits are. I know it's not, you know, it they don't look good in those jumpsuits. They should have given them something sexier. They should have given them the jumpsuits from V. That's what they should have. Yeah, I would like that. I, yeah. I, I just in between the outfits and between the fact that they're all supposed to be comedians and maybe one or two things were funny, which was like a, a shame. So I couldn't tell which was worse. The fact that you had comedians in it who weren't funny or the fact that you had Chris Hemsworth playing a himbo in the grit. He was very good to look at. Not going to lie. He was hot to look at. But I didn't like the fact that they made him the character stupid because it was yet again this caricature of making men bumbling idiots. And that's pretty much what he was in this, you know, in this movie. Not, well, I should spoil it, but I'm not going to spoil it for you. But yeah, that was pretty much what, what he was. And I mm -hmm. want to say this is probably the first role that I saw him in that I did not like mm. um, that I didn't like him in because I think for me, it would have been one thing if it was like redeemable, like if he was the mild mannered, whatever, but I just, I didn't, the, the way that the movie was set up and that it was so bad. I didn't like that. They were basically making fun of, uh, of men in this movie. And I just, I didn't, I didn't like, I didn't shame like on you part. guys for making fun of men. <sighs> I mean, and it's not, and it's not like, um, like it was balanced. Like there's jokes like on women and there's jokes like on men mm -hmm. too. And it's kind of balanced. It was very, it was very skewed and, uh, and just not, not, not funny. good. Yeah, it's like you can be objectified, but it was it was just not. I mean, I've seen movies where you know you can objectify men in them, but they're actually good. And there's like objectification without being demeaning. And I think in this case, it was you know the objectification was you know was demeaning. How dare was, they do that? God, to me. just 
<clears throat> just, I mean, just, ugh, Lord, this movie was so bad. I can't, I can't even talk you. about it. Huh? I'm the sorry. Jumpsuit to tell you right away it's going to suck. Oh, d- oh, God, yeah. I mean, first Nobody of all, would- it's not like... It, it would have been cool. This is this is just me. Would have been cool that if they would have had the jumpsuits from the original one, but maybe they would have like sexy laundry on it. That's just, this is just me. Yeah. <laughs> this is just me, you know. But they didn't even have. Yeah, it's like they didn't even have that, and it's just so freaking. Yeah, it is. It is. You're right. It's who, so who ugly. And across the woman's chest, Look at like, this. like what the hell is that? Everybody knows you don't wear this. You don't wear the, the, the no, Mm-mm. no, yeah. you, you don't, you don't. So this, this movie was just awful. I mean, Chris Hemsworth, God bless you. who's probably just like, I just need to paycheck and that's it. Happy Dinosaur says it felt awkward objectifying Chris Hemsworth in this Yeah, because he didn't deserve it. No man deserves that, honestly, but. No. I mean, if I remember correctly, they hired him, his character, as their assistant specifically because of his looks. Oh, my and God. And because I, he was klutzy and stupid. If I had an assistant who looked like that, I, I can't. I, I can't even think I about wouldn't get. I wouldn't get any work done. <laughs> <laughs> I know, happy dinosaur. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know. <laughs> we we you know what we we like the male gaze. So mm-hmm. a recast would definitely have been in order for that. Absolutely. Think of like they would have been like Charlie's not 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 the not the woke crap, but like the Charlie's Angels, the one with like uh Cameron Diaz and Lucy Lou and Drew Barrymore. We'd have mm-hmm. to cast, you know, like that. They were fun. They were fun in it. I mean, it wasn't my favorite, but it was fun. You know, it was kind of like their personalities were so different. Mm-hmm. And, you know, they they made a good, you know, they kind of complimented each other. You could see them sexy, but you could also see them getting serious. Mm-hmm. So uh, they could get the job done. Drew Barrymore can get the job done. Oh, but yeah. if she has to be sexy, she can be sexy too. So. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> so poor Chris Hemsworth. I, I, yeah. Did not the objectification was just it was it was it was awful, but that's another reason why this movie freaking tanked because mm-hmm. who wants to go to a movie if you're a man to be basically told you are everything that's evil and wrong with the world? Because if you remember correctly, the body that goes or chose in the original Ghostbusters was that of a woman, right? Right. Y'all couldn't go with that. <laughs> mm, mm. Uh, anyway, yeah. uh, Chris, I'm glad you got that check, but dang, really? <laughs> it's not gonna make it stop loving you, Chris. <sighs> no, we still we still gonna love the heck out of you. Let's see. Of course, there's Ragnarok. We all know about that. Uh 12 strong. I don't think I don't know what that is. This is I am I am I am interested. 12 what? strong. What is this? From okay, this looks like a straight up uh, military flick. Let's see here. I'm gonna turn down the volume a little bit. Um, Jerry Bruckheimer actually produces. How do I not know about this? 2018, it was fairly recent. From Jerry Bruckheimer, the producer of Black Hawk Down. Mm-hmm. So, this must be a true strong. story. Declassified true story of the horse soldiers. Okay, that Afghanistan works. special forces team deployed to Afghanistan after 9 11 under the leadership of a new captain. The team must work with an Afghan warlord to take down the Taliban. Oh, it's like the cavalry is riding into town there. Yeah. <laughs> wow. This. I- I haven't heard of this one. I haven't heard of this either. I this looks very interesting. Yeah, Happy Dinosaur says I've never heard of it either. Maybe it had no advertising. I I'm inclined to agree because this wasn't this didn't have the exposure of like say American Sniper or um or Lone Survivor or mm-hmm. or Three Kings. I've never heard 
of uh of this movie before i haven't either wow so this this one may have to go on the uh go on the watch list based on a book horse soldiers Ooh. chris hemsworth michael shannon michael pena is in is in this this is very interesting very different i was not expecting that hmm we're gonna have to watch this yeah we really are we're gonna have to put this on the on the <laughs> list. we we love military movies on this yes. show yes we, absolutely we, we sincerely do so this is yeah this one's gonna have to um Go on here. So if so, if you are watching this uh, on the replay, if you have seen Twelve Strong, um, hit us up in the comments. Yes. About uh, about this because I'm very very curious. Um, Me too. About this uh, about this movie. No, oh, very cool. Let's see, let's see. Where's a hot juicy picture? <laughs> there we go. Oh, there we go. Yeah, that looks great. Wow, gun <laughs> and horse. Gee. Horse this is, is great. beautiful. Yeah. That is some old school battle right there. I mean, before tanks and, you know, stuff like that, you had soldiers going in on horseback, mm -hmm. you know, AKA the, the cavalry. When they're talking about the cavalry's yeah. coming, yeah. Yeah. Wow. With the horses and all that, and still used today. Yes. Still yes. used today. I didn't know it was used in the Afghan war. I had no idea that we had horses like we were doing that. Did you? Did no, you I didn't know that we, that uh, they did in Afghanistan. As a matter of fact, for the longest time, I didn't think we had horses um, like active cavalry, you know, riding on horseback in the military. And then uh, one guy who had dated briefly, who was who was former military told me that part of his training was that he had to deal with the uh, equine husbandry. And I was like, "What the heck is that?" Oh He's my like, god! You don't know what equine is? He's like, "No." It's like you're going to take care of horses and you're going to learn how to ride on horseback. All that, run to ride on horseback, shoot on horseback, basically like your horse is part of your arsenal, and wow. that's basically all that they did. So we still have regiments in the military that you know that are on horseback so that's very very cool happy dinosaur says this sounds fun well good yeah. seeing you my dear thanks for being here I do appreciate it thank you thank Take you care. let's see yeah 12 strong definitely on the on the list on the list yes. that's that looks extremely extremely toxic so yes we must <laughs> we must check that one out all right so let's see here we have of course infinity war tourism all hold on mm -hmm. I you see knew we had to go there crocodile dundee we, you we, knew we, we had to go yeah. there <laughs> we're gonna check this out tourism australia dundee the son of a legend returns i didn't even home. know this existed you know what i think i've heard of this movie I think I've heard of this. Let's see. Ryan Dundee tries to locate his father in Australian Outback. Okay, so it's like a three minute, like a three minute short. Oh, is it? <laughs> yeah. And Paul Hogan is in it. <laughs> and Russell Crowe. And, wait, wait, what? Hugh Jackman. This is like oh, all dang. Is this like Mark celebrity Robbie. edition? It's a lot of famous people. Wow. Ruby Rose is in this shit. Damn. Dang. Well, isn't this a isn't this quite a gem? Oh my god. I wonder where you can watch this. Cuz it doesn't say it doesn't say here. Mm -hmm. Not rated, huh? Okay, well, we'll have to find that. I guess it's just specifically for Australia. I guess it says tourism Australia, Wait. but oh right, I right, bet you course. it's on YouTube. <laughs> Let me see. Let me see. I'm gonna go here. I'm gonna go here on YouTube and see if I can find it.
Let's see if we can find it. Cause dag one, I, I need to know. <laughs> Super Bowl 2016 ad. Okay, that's a trailer. Oh, let's see. Oh. So I'm guessing. That's not a knife. That's a knife. Oh my God, he sounds horrible. <laughs> Oh man, that's too funny. Let's see. I'm trying to see if they can find a part with Chris Hemsworth. There he is. is. There he is. Hello, hello, hello. There he is. <clears throat> yes. But listen, you're, you're the best crocodile dundee since Crocodile Dundee. Really? Yes, really. Mm. And we had the best trip ever, didn't we? It was pretty sweet. <laughs> <laughs> that okay. Native accent of his. I love that. It, I guess I guess this is uh an ad for tourism in uh, in Australia. Yeah. So yeah. this is kind of funny. I'm not trying to get copyright claimed in this. No. So, no. <laughs> so when you watch the repeat on YouTube, I'll drop it in uh in the um the description. Yeah, yeah, I'll drop it in the description and also pop it into pop it into the chat because this this looks freaking hysterical, <laughs> especially with Paul Hogan in the back. <laughs> That's just too funny. <laughs> N64 with expansion pack. Hello, and so glad to have you here. He says, shorts, I'm sorry if I misgender you, uh, shorts are so hard to find sometimes. Yeah, I'd, I'm, I'm kind of disappointed because this is one I really wanted to see. So I'm going to do some looking on YouTube, see if I can find a whole, uh, the whole short because all of those people in there, yeah, yeah, that 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 warrants having to go and uh, go and track it down for sure, for sure. Let's see. Um, all right, so Jay and Silent Bob reboot. I'm not going to talk about Men in Black International. Hell, no. No, I ain't <laughs> talking about that. Bump that movie. However, we are going to talk about Extraction. Oh my gosh, have you seen this movie? I have mm. not seen this movie. Have you? I have seen this movie. When this movie came out on Netflix, it was one of the most highly rated for oh like God. weeks, weeks and word. This wasn't a movie that um, was in the theaters, right. specifically went to streaming, did not have a huge advertising budget, purely word of mouth. I want to say like Squid Games. Yes. This is how um came up with Extraction. And from what I remember, this movie um, was produced by the Russo brothers. Oh, wow. Produced by the Russo brothers. But I believe it was filmed, um, it was filmed overseas. I want to say, I, I don't think it was, no, it wasn't, um, crap, it wasn't India. I'm blanking on exactly where. It was shot, but it was not a U.S. like a U.S. based production. Let's put it put it that way. Oh, was up on Netflix for I don't know how long, and people kept talking about it. How amazing just the um, action was in this movie, and I'm like, okay, you guys have got to be uh, God be making this up. <laughs> no. He looks really badass there. He is not only is he badass in in this film, his backstory and why he come why he turns out being like say I don't want to say a mercenary, but I will for hire. The story of how he got to that point it's like it's you get bits and pieces as you go through this movie. And you start to see the kind of like why he does what he what he does, and what, even though he's going around killing more of the fathers, <laughs> you can you know that there's a side to him that it's that it's the human side to him. Like he's not just randomly going out and doing this. What happens is there's a um, let's say I think this one I don't want to say he's a kid, but like a young adult who basically gets kidnapped. 
for for ransom and it's in one of these third world uh third world countries it looks looks like india um and he gets captured it may not be india i'm sorry don't 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 ding me too too uh, too hard. I know it's I don't I don't think it's Pakistan, mm -hmm. but he gets kidnapped, held for ransom, right? And they need someone to go in and extract him. So basically, they hire a private contractor, which is Tyler Rake. They hire him yeah. to go and get this kid out, and things go left. <laughs> But this kid is like, that's his mission is to get this kid, you know, out of the hands of these kidnappers. And the last 10 minutes of this movie is one of the most action packed climactic scenes I have ever seen. I have not held my breath that long since the uh, season opener for the one season of The Walking Dead where they're on the highway. Yes. And Carol's daughter gets loose and starts yeah, running. Yeah, Sophia, yes. Last 10 minutes of this, I, I was just like, I was blown the heck away oh by God, his, by the movie, by his performance. And I could not believe how good this movie was. It is just as good. It's worthy of the word of mouth that people were saying about it. So much so that there is actually a sequel. What? Yes. Yes, there's actually a sequel to this movie. It was kind of, it was debated whether or not there was going to be, um, that there was going to be a sequel. And people had talked about it, had kind and of kicked it, it around. And yes, and he and this he's year. in it. And he is in it. Cannot, oh, cannot, cannot freaking wait for this movie. We're going to have to watch it. <laughs> We are going to have to, we are going to have to watch it. We are actually going to have to watch the first one. Okay. So you saw, hang on here. I'm going to bring it back. This scene right here. So that's the bridge. Okay. That's the bridge that they were on. This is from the last, I'm going to say the last 10 minutes of the film. Mm -hmm. This is on that bridge. They have to get across that bridge to get into the neighboring country for the extraction point. So the kid that he's guarding, which right there has to get him out. Mm. The first extraction movie is absolute fire. You can watch it on Netflix. Chris Hemsworth. I mean, if you want to see just there, there's there's so much in in the original uh, the original extraction movie first of all just how good of an actor he is because yeah. he is playing a mercenary who has had to go through one of the biggest personal tragedies um in his life and having to fight those demons and at the same time accomplishing this mission to get this kid you know um to get this kid out and it's mm -hmm. not it's not playful Thor, you know, it's not, you know, the very affable, you know, person, you know, like kind of like how he is in interviews. No, this is some straight up amazing drama. And one of the <laughs> best things that I've ever seen him in completely, completely toxic fail from beginning oh to and from when he's killing mofos to when you see the flashbacks to the personal tragedy that happened, you know, um, to him. So we yeah. got to do watch party. Yeah. First we got to do, got to do, do, do the first extraction. And, the and first I think one on, is, on my channel, second one on yours. <laughs> that sounds good. That sounds perfect. Because you're going to catch a moment. Honestly, this this movie, this movie, I I, I have to give Netflix props because yeah. there's some movies we would not have heard of this one, yes, unless it came out on Netflix and it just it caught fire and wow, you know, I'm so excited to see this now. <laughs> it's 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 awesome. It's abs it's absolutely absolutely awesome. And for people who thought that the only thing that Chris Hemsworth could do was play Thor or play like bit parts, I mean I have I didn't see the uh was it 12 
what horse is? Oh, 12. The Af yeah. Uh, yeah, the 12 Afghanistan strong. movie. 12 Strong. 12 Strong, yeah. I didn't see 12 Strong, so this is probably in the vein of 12 Strong, but if you hadn't seen that, you saw Extraction, you can see exactly how talented this man is um, with uh, with his acting. It's absolutely, absolutely flipping, flipping really? amazing. Yeah, we need a watch party on your channel yeah. for this one. We're going to have to. <laughs> we're going to have to do, we have to do that one. Let's see. He was in, I guess, What If. Uh, yeah, I didn't see that. I skipped that one. Now, this one, which I will bring up. This is a movie that when I first saw the trailer on Netflix, I said, hmm, I'm going to have to, I think I'm going to have to, uh, I think I'm going to have to watch this. Yeah, kind of it's... think of it as if, um, I want to say it's, hmm, kind of like if Norman Bates was just like, was a psychologist in a way, not really a psychologist, but think of if he was working in drug clinical trials or something, something like that. So what happens is there's this place called Spiderhead, which base it kind of looks like, I don't know, why does that look like the Avengers? <laughs> it's kind of like out here and basically in the quote unquote near future, well, we can actually say now, if you look yeah. through the movie, Instead of going to the clink, <laughs> you can volunteer as a medical subject to shorten your sentence. And the you, you're not quite sure um, exactly what's what's going on. You see like all these subjects and everything that they, you know, that they're in there and they're running, you know, the two-way mirror, you know, as you can see, mm -hmm. and they're running these experiments. So when the movie first opens up, they have this one subject, he's there and he's laughing. You know, they're telling him like dad jokes and he's, you know, like usually dad jokes are like, God, that's <laughs> so bad. And, you know, he keeps, he keeps telling, you know, these, uh, these same jokes to him. Let's see. And where's, where's, uh, where's he's he? great in the film too. I don't, I don't remember that actor's name, but, um. Yeah, he's really he's really good. I forget um I forget his name, but with uh with Chris Hemsworth, it's like the you know he's telling these dad jokes and the subject he's just like laughing hysterically, and then his assistant says, "Okay, I'm going to ask you some serious um some serious give you some serious statements." He's like, "Okay," and he's reading back like some very horrific facts, and the subject is still laughing hysterically. Mm -hmm. So you know something you know something is just something's just not just not right and they're in pursuit of this drug to generate feelings of like of uh of love it's like they're trying to capture love in a bottle but the interesting thing is eventually you start to figure out is that really what they're after and you have these people here in this environment and a lot of it is some seriously crafty psychological manipulation. It's like, why is it? It's a technically a prison, but no one wants to leave. This would never pass an institutional review board um, <laughs> for, nope. for a research study. This nope. Is, you know, kind of, I'm not going to say the island of Dr. Moreau, but it's almost on the border of that level of crazy. <laughs> yes, it is. You are absolutely, <laughs> absolutely right. And because of that, and because we, because we know that, it makes us even, even crazy fast, even more crazy fascinating to watch. I, I really enjoyed um, watching this. It was definitely worth the time spent watching. Again, Chris Hemsworth. He goes from, let's say, the military, you know, mission-minded person in extraction to an almost psychopathic uh, doctor type. I'll say doctor type because I'm not trying to spoil anything. And just how he manipulates people with his words and his actions. It's it's just like, dang, that is freaking creepy. <laughs> and the, <laughs> the subjects are being completely manipulated. There is no, they're not, you know, kind of like making decisions um, where they could say, I'm, I'm leaving, I'm out of here. This is total and 100% 
uh, physical and psychological manipulation of the subjects. Absolutely. Absolutely. But it is just that whole thing and how Chris Hemsworth character is through this. And as an amazing soundtrack, I will tell you that <laughs> it's got some really, really cool, uh, cool music and some of it that is very um germane to the plot as well and he looks he it. looks good in the film too so there is that <laughs> he looks amazingly amazingly hot um in the film he looks so hot with glasses and what's on. interesting is that they and i think i'm sure it's part of you know part of the intrigue of it is that you know he is so good looking that he comes across as being somewhat more trustworthy um, and, you know, I think that his face, that appearance of, you know, someone who is attractive, you know, mm -hmm. he gets a lot of leeway or, or takes a lot. As, it, they gave him an inch and he's taking a mile, you know. Um, yes. <laughs> Very much so. Trust me. Don't you trust me? Don't you? Don't you trust me? And, and there are a lot of scenes in this film that don't have any talking parts or let's just say not words. Maybe people are making noises. And you can mm -hmm. tell from what you're watching that, you know, there are some things that are wrong. You know, it, I love films that don't have, you know, a lot of verbal acting, but have a lot of, uh, you know, physical parts, but mm -hmm. perhaps don't have, you know, they're not explaining it to you. You have to watch it and, you know, see what's happening. And once you realize what you've just seen, you're mm -hmm. like, holy shit. I know. I'm like, I what didn't did expect it to go that way. Yeah, what am I watching? You know, it's like, what is this like legal? <laughs> but um, um yeah. But you're um, you're you're right. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, my dear. Yeah, no, no. That, I I was finished, and yeah, it uh, it definitely grabs your attention, <sighs> and it's also you kind of see things from that main character's point of view as well. Mm -hmm. He's he's almost he knows exactly the manipulation that's going on. In other words, and, and I. I think that it, it, it does talk about the desperation that individuals face when being incarcerated because nobody wants to be in prison. But, um, you know, I, I think that that it's, it's very interesting to use prisoners as test subjects in, in the guise that they're doing it voluntarily. You know, they're not, mm -hmm. they're trying to lessen their sentences. This is not voluntary at all. They no. wouldn't be doing this if they didn't have sentences to trade. So, um, I, I think that's very interesting. A volunteer of a, as a medical subject is somebody who isn't going to lose anything uh, when they volunteer. And, you know, for, for these people, the price is so high, um, you know, versus going mm -hmm. to prison. You know, a lot of people would say, yeah, I'd rather do anything than go to prison. You've heard people say, like, so I, I think it's a very mm -hmm. interesting uh, test subject group because ideally as a researcher, that's not a, a test subject group you would want. Exactly. Exactly. And there's also an added dimension, which I'm not going to talk about because right. it, gonna... it, it is a spoiler and yes. you, you will pick up on this <laughs> of exactly why these particular people volunteered themselves. Let's yes. put it that way. You, you will, you will find that out. So yes, like you were saying, the fact that they're the things that don't come with dialogue that are not explained you can see the dynamics that are that are going on in this and just Chris Hemsworth's character just playing everybody like instruments. It's 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 scary. But mm -hmm. so when he does it, it's so it's so believable. It it really it really is believable. So it's it's a it's a great performance from a from a, from him. Um also Miles Teller, who I don't believe. I've actually seen him before. He is actually very, very good. Uh, yeah, he's, this, he's a great actor. In this um, film as well. I haven't seen him in anything um, before, but I'll have to check it out. But I will say that in this particular movie, he is the toxic male character, the traditional toxic male character, which you will find out when you watch the film exactly why that is and why he does what he does so you have to check check that out that's that spider head is definitely it's a it, it's not citizen kane no <laughs> it's not citizen kane however it is a good popcorn movie 
to, oh, yes. to watch on uh, to watch on Netflix. It really, it really is. I mean, people who are giving it a, a five point four IMDb, I would no. probably give. I'd give it probably like a six and a half to a seven. I, I mean, mm-hmm. I, I really, I really would. I did not find it um, to be a waste of time at all. I may eventually go back and uh, check it out, but it was. It was actually good. It was a good watch. I'm glad I invested time actually in uh in watching it. Let's see. Untitled Hulk Hogan biopic. I'm gonna open this real quick before we get to Thor uh loving Thor Thor loving yeah. thunder. Yes. Let's see. Untitled Hulk Hogan biopic. Hmm. So he's gonna be Hulk Hogan. <laughs> oh, he is? I think so. Wait, wait, wait. Terry Bollea. Okay. So I guess he's going to be in it. I don't know. It's It's, a lot of it is just, I think it's just like announced. So we'll have to look, we'll have to keep an eye on it to find out what happens uh, with him being in the biopic, but we'll keep an eye out. We'll keep an eye out on that. And then of course, here we have Thor. Love and Thunder releases July 8th. Uh-huh. Yep. Yep. Thor enlists the help of Valkyrie Korg and ex-girlfriend Jane Foster to fight Gore the God Butcher who intends to make the gods extinct. Go ahead. Go ahead. I was gonna say. <laughs> well, I, I, <laughs> okay, go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> I wish I was excited about this, but I'm going to let her mm, go first with this one. Well, one thing I can say about this film is that we have Thor returning back to form physically. Um, Very true. Know, he, he's as hard as a freaking rock in this damn thing. <laughs> and, you know, God bless him for doing this. Uh, this I'm, I'm not going to call it it's almost like an infamous nude scene, uh, considering the context that it's being shown. But you know, it's the nude scene that that everybody is talking about. Everybody on mm-hmm. Earth is talking about this nude scene, mm-hmm. and you and I have spoken about it uh, at length uh, ad nauseum on on toxic femininity. But what I was going to say is that um, you know, what's so unusual about this character is that he was transformed from someone who was not so fit. Um, you know, at a point where he was kind of changed around and his his focus was off. And it was almost like he regressed because it was, you know, the, he became sort of like this college stoner, if you will, you know, who, <laughs> he, doesn't, he didn't even give it up, you know what I mean? Like with the bong on the dining room table, uh-huh. he's been in it since freshman year. You Trucker know, this is, hat, just that's right. Whatever, sitting there yeah. trying to and, find the... Uh... I should have had the trailer queued up. But even his 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 voice, if it was a dad bod, it would be him with kids. And he's like running after toddlers, right? And then you say, oh, you know, he's a dad. You know, I, I totally get that, dad bod, whatever. But they made him into, into like, you know, a college, you know, frat boy versus, you know, what I would say, you could kind of look at a dad bod and say, well, you know, he's hustling and he's busting his ass, taking care of those kids every day. Mm-hmm. So I think that that's a very different approach. They could have done something like that. I mean, I don't know how the hell they would have written that in the script, but you know, where he couldn't focus on himself and he had to kind of like sacrifice and do something for somebody else and opposed that they made him almost somewhat more selfish mm-hmm. in a sense. And so selfish that he didn't even take care of himself anymore. And yeah, I don't really that. believe that Thor Although would ever I- do that. Like, yeah, I agree with you. I think he he's too he's too narcissistic. He, to look in the mirror, he's like, "Damn, I look good," you know. Like he just wouldn't do that. But I could see him partying, yes, but not letting himself go. No, dude, dude had dude looked like Jeff Bridges from The Big Lebowski. <laughs> I mean, down to the sweater that that he that he had on and it wasn't like (sighs) that was just not something that I could see him doing and I don't even know even if they did that when I first saw it I'm like yeah he he's gonna drop that weight by the time you know everybody goes into into action but no they kept him as freaking fat Thor 
throughout the whole movie. And I'm like, Bullshit, man. I'm why? I mean, and, and, here, and, here, and, here, and here's my gripe again with them, um, with the with the MCU. It's like Thor didn't start out that way. You know, Thor was very proud of what, you know, what he, you know, what he looked like. You know, he's proud of, you know, proud of his body, proud of his physique. And you're going to tell me that he just has a crisis and he's just going to let a beer gut sit on him. I don't, I don't think so. And I want to know whose idea it was to do that, actually. It just, I, I don't like it when characters that you get to know that they wind up subverting your expectations and basically you know nerfing the character like they did with loki because loki was not a character that i cared for but the more i saw him the more i really started to like him and then episode one of loki happened and i'm like okay i'm out this is not the this is not the loki that that i'm that i'm interested in i mean i do like the training montage because it's like he's Doing it like Rocky and trying to get the, I love the fact that just like the giant that has chains on. So he's using the chains, you know, and he's got hat on and doing all that. And then he's finally, you know, hey, I'm back in, you know, back in. Damn, up, he back looks in good. shape. I freaking love that. <laughs> I love that. Wow. I love that. Oh I, my I God. The, don't you love Great. the fur cape there? That's cool. Freaking, <sighs> I love the leather on there too. I yes. like this. Yes, yes, like that's this. how you make a new outfit for a god. He is godlike, this Thor character. Sexy, mm -hmm. sexy form fitting shapes with the accent going around the sides of his 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 incredible physique and chest. His his guns are out, but he I also know. has these giant uh things to protect his forearms and his his muscles are just bulging right Jesus out of that. Out. He turns around and it's like his presence. He has a presence, you know, he's got the beard going here, the long hair, the intent on his face. He's kicking ass and taking names here. Thor is back. He is, yes, completely. And this, this pisses me off so, 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 so freaking much because Molinaire is his. Not hers. I, I, uh, I, I, granted, okay, from what I heard from a comic run, which did not do so well, from what I understand, is that Thor was deemed unworthy to wield Molinar. So Jane Foster did for a brief period in, uh, in time, which apparently, I guess she was suffering from breast cancer and her wielding Molinier actually made it like even worse or something like that. Well, I'm like, I'm completely fucked up. Yeah, totally, totally. And somebody said, yeah, that's why that run did so freaking terrible. And they said, why is it they're taking stuff from some of the worst runs in the comics and making movies out of them? I said, I don't, I don't really, I said, I don't really get that. And I, yeah. And I, I don't like, <laughs> I said he looks like a power. Why does he look like one of the Vespas from the Book of Boba Fett? I, Something from Donkey Kong. I, I don't, I don't like, yeah, it's like, I don't, uh, I was like, I just don't like. Just what happened to the cool part. leather? I like him in leather. I like that leather fit, that tight leather fit on his body. I did too, but I don't know, I guess. I guess yeah, they decided to not go with that. That blue and white, it's not my favorite he needs leather he needs gold he needs leather or silver that looks very um it's very cartoonish it reminds me of the My the miles morales outfit that that run that everybody's talking about you remember how it has the circles oh it can't be a coincidence it can't be i don't no i don't think so i don't think so do either. you know what i'm talking about let's see i think i've seen pictures of it well the miles morales um supposed to be Thor has those circles on it like that and it kind of reminds me of it. I did see that along with the Molinier with the time. CD on it. Yes, it's <laughs> hammer time. That's good. good but even that outfit looked a little silly um, and it looks very it similar did. to what he's wearing now because he wouldn't wear that shit. Damn, look at his arms. Oh my god. No, I know his arms oh are god. cool but it's just like I feel like I'm supposed to be playing whack-a-mole whack or 
press she things. looks so down next to him she looks like a child oh my god i know he's six foot three but wow yeah she looks like a baby like a little she's, child she's probably as tall as me like i'm five six mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah he look he's just even if he didn't have that crazy chest plate that they have on there the arms do not lie oh no his arms look gorgeous goodness gracious oh my god his arms look gorgeous i just don't i just don't like I, I don't like this yeah that's he doesn't need it it competes with his golden hair it's not the right like no, you're um, a point it's not the right accent on him you know there's I something agree. off about it um and it's messy it looks messy on him but um it, yeah it looks cheap i don't yeah, I don't I don't like it. The only person who should have something like that is Tony Stark because he's wearing yeah. the Iron Man um suit. That makes sense be because he doesn't confident, have right? exactly. He doesn't have his his superpower is actually his brain. So that's why he's got the armor on. For Thor, freaking need that. Now she what she's wearing isn't bad, but if they if they threw me in one of these costumes, I'd be like, just make my chest incredibly big and my waist super small. That's all I'm asking you to do. I don't care what else happens. Just make me like I want to look like one of those superhero women um, with a and then tiny tiny waist because I don't have a tiny waist, so I figure why not? You know, go for it. <laughs> Give me some boob armor. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Yes, <laughs> I would very, I would very much like to have a yes. like to have boob armor, you know. Just give me, just give me some of that. But you know, she looks like a kid. She doesn't look like a, a grown woman. I guess that's mm -hmm. what I'm trying to say. I think she's great. I think she's a great actress. But it's like a kid. She's supposed. To, she's a huge character in this, right? Yeah, yeah. She's King Valkyrie in this. Hmm. That's what she's. That's what she's supposed to. Uh, that's what she's supposed to be. I mean, I didn't, I didn't really I, like her character very much. I would have given her some gold braids. This is just me. You know, this is what I want to see. You know, I feel like I'm, I'm, I'm going to be sporting some gold braids, gold, like real gold mm -hmm. braids in there. And, you know, just kind of brighten up, you know, from here going down, just the glitter. Because it is the, a very dark palette. Yeah. Yeah. The, just the shimmer of it. And she would be shining uh, in that next to him. And then she wouldn't seem like a child. She would kind of seem more, you know, queen like, like a mm -hmm. queen in that regard. Um, and maybe some jewelry. Because, damn it, we need some jewelry. In this I know. It's like, hook, <laughs> it's like, hook somebody up. This is not even what we're talking about, but, you know, just like as a whole. Oh, I'm um, just trying to get to the, the part here. <laughs> Now look at look at what um what's his name is wearing. Um I love Russell Crowe. It's Russell Crowe, right? Yes, it is Russell Crowe. He's wearing gold. Mm -hmm. And you see how much, you know, like he's he's kind of hefty here, but he looks badass in that, right? Especially how it's like hammered out and, and all of and all of that. Yeah, see that looks cool. Yeah, it looks like he's been through a ton of wars, a ton of fights. It's got that breastplate going on. It's you know. Right. That a warn. Right. That's what I'd like to see her in, you know, something as prestigious, as cool looking as that. Mm -hmm. Oh my God. Oh. It goes by so fast. It does. <laughs> they probably said you're going to have to make it faster or else we're not going <laughs> to, we're not going to keep our PG 13, you know, rating. For what's going on, of course, I, I think it's, while it's like so wrong, this is the most viewed part of this trailer on mm -hmm. YouTube. Like literally it's tagged as most viewed. And I think it's yeah. like up to 47 million views, I think, or something like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Which is just absolutely, absolutely crazy. He's He's got an amazing body, but it's just like, uh... I don't think this is the right place to see it like that. No, no. I don't like to see him tied up like that um, and nude. As I've said before, I feel like he should, you know, I'd rather see him nude, you know, like what you said, Lorraine. He's training and then his, you know, he's so fit that what he was wearing just comes off. Mm -hmm. And he's like, oh, shoot, you know, yeah. 
abs could not hold up this larger shorts on me, you know, or, or the ones I showed you like with the Rocky and, um, mm -hmm. and, and, you know, where their legs are kind of moving and you can kind of see them doing the, the, you know, um, it's that cool training montage. Yeah. Um, kind of training, you know, even if like, say he's, you know, lifted weights and, you know, he's gotten so skinny that his pants fall down. We get a, we get a snap of like bare butt. We can understand that. So I'm like, okay, I got to pull my pants up while I just hold up all that weight with one arm, you know, while I, while I do it. But that's, that's not like a, it's not a humiliating scenario it's an embarrassing scenario of course but it's not this is more humiliating and <sighs> don't really quite like it like at all but from what i understand taika waititi's like you have this amazing body it's a sham you know you don't you don't show it off i mean there's a difference between showing it off and exploitation that's like one of the most classic classic training montages ever i love that when they're running on the beach <laughs> and then they zoom in on their muscles like they're they're doing yeah you can them. see it from like rippling as they're running and everything <laughs> oh my god yeah i remember that part and i saw that when i was like "Ooh, am i supposed yeah, to be so reacting funny. to that like that <laughs> yes we are we are supposed to be reacting to this this is supposed to be something that we're impressed with because these men have such beautiful bodies and, you know, they clearly have a lot of chemistry, even though, let's say, at one time they were competing against one another or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. But, you know, yeah. they have this chemistry and, you know, they're building, they're, they're training and feeding off of each other's, you know, um, uh, energy that's getting them through this workout. And and the legs, as they're, they're just going in, oh, my gosh, I can't even, this picture is just like, oh, my God, it's so I'm good. <laughs> I love this picture. He, he, oh he is... God. He is wonderful to look at. Oh God! Absolutely, absolutely wonderful, <laughs> wonderful. But yes, yes, I know, I know, I know. You probably say like, ladies need to calm down. No, not really. Oh, no, he's um. No, he looks like that for a reason, and um, we're we're we are absolutely going to acknowledge that he looks that oh, good. God, he looks so good. Um, God, if uh, Chris, have you ever watched this? <laughs> ever see this we appreciate how much time and effort you take to make yourself look good and we don't Absolutely. care what they did to thor before we know you were fit mm -hmm. underneath in the fat suit or whatever we know you were yeah we knew it. that <laughs> and we knew he, that he just like everything from i don't even know how many muscle groups i can name the glutes the whatever the this the that it's just you know one after the other after the other just perfectly uh sculpted it's like he looks like a like a one of those statues from antiquity of, of mm -hmm. somebody competing in the olympics and it's like the man has his beautiful body and and you know a discus thrower maybe or something like that and mm -hmm. it's just just remarkable um how he uh i i can't even i just i don't even know he just you know he just he just is and it's and it kind of um reminds me of how in hollywood movies of late that this seems to be a bad thing or something, mm -hmm. you know, or something to uh, something to be shamed. This wasn't always the case. And something that I noticed in foreign cinema, I shouldn't say foreign, but I, but I will, foreign cinema is there isn't this aversion to what the male physique looks like. If anything, it's just like it's something to aspire to. It's not something that's, you know, something that's demonized. It's something that's prominently, you know, shown in advertisements and everything and in print media but it seems like here in the u.s this is seen this is deemed to be so toxic no we it's it's toxic if you work out you know it's toxic masculinity if you take you know any you know any pride you know um in your in your body yeah it's a shame that that seems to be something that is uh accepted and i think we should reject that notion i think that it's foolish and you know, staying in shape is a very positive thing and it's good for you. So, you know, I think that this is definitely, I hope this, he influences other people, just like I've seen how sometimes, like what we saw in the Rocky video, how they mm -hmm. fed off each other's energy to continue and to maintain that health. I hope people see this and, you know, they get inspired by it. 
um, of what is possible, you know, to achieve. And he didn't, he didn't turn out that way overnight. This man probably works out seven days a week. <laughs> Especially since he's, you know, one of those Hollywood stars now, you know, they got those trainers on speed dial, like come yes. over to my house. <laughs> what are you eating? I'm going to come in your house and throw everything out your refrigerator. Mm -hmm. And it's just Chips. like, you can't have that. Just, no, you, you can't, you can't have that. No. <laughs> That's right. That's right. No. Oh, you haven't started working. This isn't the real workout. You jogged for an hour or two, but that's not the real workout. No, it's not done. You know, you're going to be catching your cannon house. balls. You know, like, you're going to be flipping over tires. I'm going to be at your house 5 a.m. with an air horn. Eh, time to wake up. We're <laughs> <laughs> oh, but we're so thankful that uh, oh that, uh, that, that you so do. Good. So, yes. So that is going to wrap it up uh, for our toxic masculinity appreciation show for today. I actually <laughs> screwed that up. Toxic male appreciation. So much fun talking about uh, <laughs> talking about Chris Hemsworth, drooling over Chris Hemsworth, but most importantly, highlighting films of his that show positive depictions of toxic masculinity so we do okay. hope that you'll check out uh check out some of those films and yes. why don't you tell the people where they can find you yes well of course you can find me here on our toxic male appreciation show on twitch at 5 p.m on thursdays eastern standard time you can also find me on midnight's edge in the morning uh with tom and with andre at 12 p.m uh on midnight's edge channel sometimes on fridays and saturdays you can find me streaming uh with robert meyer burnett on the post geek singularity on his show midnight musings on sunday mornings at 10 30 a.m you can find me streaming on my channel positive fandom on um, and my show is called um sunday brunch guys at 10 30 in the morning stop by we yes can talk about all the fun things going on in the fandom uh it's a, a really fun time hope to see you guys there and of course monday nights you can find me on Toxic Femininity with Lorena and Nina Infinity on mm -hmm. Midnight's Edge as well at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. She is a hardworking woman. You need to sub to her channel. So yes, please, please sub to her over on YouTube. Fandom. You can't sub here on Twitch, but especially over on YouTube because we're trying to get her to a thousand, yes. uh, thousand subs. Yes. And... Let's see, uh, fill in the blanks. Uh, let's see what's today. Today is it? Well, we'll go during the week. Sundays at 8 p.m. Eastern. I have a show called Welcome to Florida where we talk about the latest crazy Florida man uh, story. So we have fun laughing and learning about the second craziest state in the union mm -hmm. Tuesdays sometimes I do have live streams sometimes I don't so you kind of just have to check Twitter and the YouTube page usually on Tuesdays I'll alternate between the anime girls show where we grab like a certain anime and talk about that or the theme park geeks and divas show which I co-host with culture casino and Chris Gore of film threat where we just yes. talk about theme park stuff and yes. you know old school theme park stuff that we love and new school theme park stuff that you know, we don't love, you know, not so much. So we kind of have that, uh, that going on. Wednesdays at 8.30 p.m. You can catch me on the Dark Council on Drunk yes. Rupio's Basement channel. Awesome, awesome show. I call it the best show on YouTube on Wednesdays. Got to go oh, yeah. check it, that out. Thursdays, of course, we're here for the Toxic Male Appreciation Show. This week, of course, let's see, Saturday, I'm going to be at Universal Orlando, kind of hanging out there for uh, for the summer of the 4th of July weekend, kind of having some fun, streaming through there, taking there, and having a great fun. And of course, Saturday night, 8 p.m. Eastern, we are going to be reviewing season four, part two of Stranger Things. You do not want to miss it. I'm so freaking excited about it. I feel like I've been waiting forever. <sighs> you have been. It feels like that, but their timing couldn't be any better. Lorena, this is going to, that's going to be a great show. It's going to be an awesome show. Awesome show. And hope you guys can definitely come and check it out. So with that said, folks, we will see you next week. Same place, same time. Thank you so much for watching and we will talk to you soon. Bye. Bye.